Hi everyone, it's Rachel from Burn That Butter. And today on my Facebook, I had made a comment about something that I had posted and I just kind of wanted to elaborate on it. What I said was that um, I was talking about how much weight that I've lost. I've lost um, about 57 pounds so far. I started at 260, right now I am uh, 203 as of this morning. And um, I've made a lot of progress. I've got maybe 40, possibly as much as 50 pounds left to go. And um, I had posted a picture of myself getting up and um, basically being in the parking lot at my gym before the sun had come up. And I said, this is what dedication looks like. It's getting up early, working out before the sun is up and getting it in before going to work. And um, so some people are like, oh, you're my hero and you're just, you're amazing and all this kind of stuff. And I, I made a joke about it saying, well, you know, here I am, I'm, um, you know, I'm not making it look easy because I don't have the genetics and I certainly don't have the talent. But what I do have is I am about as stubborn of a cuss as there are on this planet. And when I decide that I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do something. And um, that is something, and I was just kind of thinking about that. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what you can control and what you can't control. And um, so I have some like notes here for myself. So I, I, you know, I don't want to forget what I wanted to, um, what I wanted to say. And uh, so um, let's, let's go ahead and get started. So what are things that like nobody can control, right? So the first one, I'm writing it down. Genetics. Nobody can control genetics, okay? Um, so for example, for me, um, on both sides, my mother and father's side of the family, going several generations back, there's diabetes, there's heart disease. In fact, on my mother's side of the family, the men in my mother's side of the family have their first heart attack by age 50 at the very latest. And with their first heart attack, they drop dead, okay? That's some crappy genetics. Well, the women tend to last a little longer because we have estrogen and estrogen projects your heart. Um, and so heart disease and just um, uh, cardiac arrest, this, this, is, this is just in our family, okay? Nobody can control genetics. Same thing with diabetes. I have diabetes on both sides of my family and people um, tend to be overweight and that we have to really work very hard to control our weight. And um, that's, that's not just, you know, kind of in the immediate history where calories were, were more available, things like, I mean, we're talking about going several generations back, everybody's fat, okay? So it, it's, it's some really crappy genetics. Also, you know, some other things. I can't control that. I certainly can't and um, did not pick my grandparents. Nobody can pick their parents. Nobody can pick their grandparents, their great grandparents. Your genetics are what they are. Your genes are what they are. But there is a little bit of um, how the genes express themselves and things like environment and the food that you eat and things like that can, can make a difference in how those genes express themselves. But definitely genetics, nobody can control that. Um, and as I said before, nobody can control if they have talent, okay? Um, I'm not a natural athlete, not by a long shot. Um, I'm not naturally graceful. I'm not naturally um, just, a, I don't play sports well, things along those lines. It doesn't come easy for me to get out there and to do exercise, right? I don't have talent. Um, some people, they figure out really quickly that, they, um, that they're really good at um, upper body stuff, lower body stuff. They're, they're, they have speed, they have coordination, they have um, just kind of rapid reflexes, things like that, that help them to be able to play different in different types of sports or to have success in, in, in different types of activities. I have none of that, okay? 
So um, what else can you can you not control? As I drop my pen, because <laughs> I'm a real person, right? Okay. So what also can you not not control? You cannot control your life circumstances. And I'm sticking a little question mark there, right? Because we all make choices in things, but what I'm, I'm talking about is, okay, maybe your boss is a jerk. Maybe you have jerks for coworkers. Maybe you're on deadlines. Maybe um, your roof has sprung a leak. There are, there are just some things, you know, maybe there's a flood in, in your backyard. There are just some life circumstances that you cannot control, okay? But you, you do the best that you can. You make, make do with what you've got. Um, if you don't have a lot of money to invest in, um, in a gym membership, things along those lines, well, um, guess what? There, you, can, you can do just using your own body, things along those lines. You can do um, you know, just natural body weight kinds of things. There are also like, I belong to Planet Fitness, okay? In the past, I would have just said, oh, Planet Fitness, they're just, um, they kind of cater to people who don't want to exercise, they cater to people who um, just, whatever, you know, like they don't have free weights there, things along those lines, right? So um, it's, it's all machines, right? They don't have classes, they don't have a pool, they don't have, well, you know what? Planet Fitness is $10 a month. So, uh, other parts of my lifetime, I could afford a gym that was more expensive. Right now, $10 a month is what fits into my budget, okay? You don't have to spend a lot of money to be able to exercise, but work within your life circumstances, right? If you're going through a divorce, if you um, just, your kids uh, are, are having trouble in school, there are just certain things that you can't control, right? But um, there are things in your life that you can control. And some of them, you know, there may be a little bit of a question mark next to it, but there are some things that you definitely can um, have control of over in your life. And one of them is the amount, and I'm putting a little question mark. One of them is sleep. Sleep is something that, you know, you might have a little bit of control over. There, you know, maybe if you have some, uh, things going on in your brain or your biochemistry that make it difficult for you to sleep. Um, you do as I say, not as I do, right? You can work with your um, doctor. There are things like melatonin, there's CPAP machines. Uh, you can, you know, perhaps experiment with getting a better mattress or a better pillow, things along those lines. But you know what you can, you know, and those, some of those things may be out of your price range and, and you just can't do that. But you know what you can control with your sleep? You can control when you go to bed, okay? Um, not getting high quality sleep, not getting enough sleep, it is horrible for your metabolism, okay? Um, it makes you have cravings. It makes it hard for you to regulate your appetite. Um, it just it, it just does a number on your body. It makes it hard for your body to heal. It makes it hard for you to, um, if you're exercising, for you to gain muscle to repair um, little microfibers within your muscles that that break, which is like gonna happen when you're exercising. That's that's what they're supposed to do. Muscles, muscle tissue, proteins, they break down and then they get rebuilt back up. And when they get rebuilt back up, they should be built back stronger. Well, you need to be able to go into a REM sleep. You need to be able to create growth hormones. All of these things are linked, okay? You need to be able to do that in order to have improvement. So getting sleep controlling your sleep environment, having what they call good sleep hygiene, things like that. This can really help you with being able to be successful in diet and exercise. Okay. What else can you control? You can control your attitude and you can control your response to stress. Okay. Nobody, nobody is born with perfect life circumstances. Nobody lives a stress-free life, okay? It's impossible. Everybody has things that happen. Everybody has bad things that happen. So, and stress can be a good thing. Stress can be a bad thing, right? So even positive stresses in your life 
things like getting pregnant, things like having a baby, um, things like getting married. Um, these should be hopefully, hopefully these are positive things in your life, right? But these are stresses, right? So whether it's a good stress or whether it's a bad stress, what is your attitude? Okay. These are things that you can control, that you can try to get control over your thought processes and try to control your responses, right? So if something bad happens to me, if I have a crappy day at work, I'd be like, oh my God, I had a horrible day at work and three bad things happen because bad things happen in threes. And you know what? I just, I'm not even going to exercise because it's just like, it's my whole day is ruined. Okay. That kind of attitude is something that you need to turn around. You can take control over. You can say, you know what? Bad things happen to me, but you know what? I don't leave a charmed life any more than anybody else does. And um, I'm moving forward, okay? I don't have to dwell on this. I don't have to sit here and stew in negativity. I can move forward and I can dust myself off and I can just kind of keep going and either learn from this experience or not learn from this experience. So your attitude, your response to stress, this can make a huge difference in, in being able to just, you know, lose weight, right? Um, I don't have to stuff things in my pie hole. If I have a bad phone call with my dad, I don't need to go and, and eat and eat and eat as a way to, con to deal with my stress because I've asked myself, is this helping? Does it change the situation? Does it does it change how the the conversation that I had with with my father, with my sister, with you know uh, wh whoever, with a neighbor, right? No, my eating, my my you know, it makes you feel good for all of three seconds while that food is in your mouth, but literally once it goes down your gullet, you're, you're back to where you started from, and then you feel even worse because you have that self-doubt and you have that self-hatred and, and it's just, it is, I say it with so much love. It's a vicious cycle and you don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that anymore. I give you and I give my pers myself permission to not do that anymore because it's not effective. Okay. Let's find other ways to, um, deal with stress. Let's, let's find other ways to, um, to, to kind of manage it, right? And manage our, our attitudes. Okay. Well, what else can we control? You can definitely, and I've been sort of saying this all along, you can control your diet and you can control your fluid intake. Okay. So if I am feeling stressed out, I, you know, I've said in a previous video, I don't have to eat M&Ms anymore. You know why? Cause M&Ms aren't special, right? I can have any M&Ms anytime I want. Um, but it, it's, it's not helping. It's not special. Um, and I, I don't have to eat that. I can put higher quality food into my body and give myself higher quality nutrition for me to build muscle, for me to power my brain, for me to power my whole body chemistry, right? Um, it's, it is all completely interconnected. Okay. What you eat, um, and, and what you drink, right? So if you're dehydrated, you're going to feel sluggish. You're going to have all kinds of delightful things. Like maybe you'll get constipated. Maybe you'll have belly aches. Maybe you'll just, um, not feel well. Maybe you'll have you know, like really, um, bad skin, dry skin, things along those lines. So you can control maybe drinking more and making more positive choices. You don't have to have soda. You don't have to have diet soda. You can have water. You can add a spritz of lemon to it. You can add a few little um, uh, pieces of fruit, like strawberries or something, or smash up some raspberries, put that in your water and give it a little bit of flavor or maybe some um, mint leaves, things like that. Um, all of these things are ways where it, the water tastes better, your drink tastes better, you wanna drink more, you're not necessarily, um, you don't have to buy fancy, expensive water. You don't have to use a, a filter for your water. Although, you know, it, it probably will be better if you do that, but yeah, these things are expensive and you have to think about it and plan for it and all that kind of stuff. You can just increasing your water intake is probably going to make you feel a lot better. Increasing your diet, maybe 
Um, and, and part of that comes to perhaps planning a little bit better so that you aren't getting in a situation where, boy, if I notice, and, and I'm gonna throw my own self under the bus. You know what I used to do? I would be ravenously hungry when I would leave work, right? I would, I would kind of have that blood sugar dip and I would get like crazy, crazy hungry. And I knew my husband wasn't gonna be home for another hour, hour and a half. So you know what I used to do, right? Most days after work, I might pull through Taco Bell. I might pull through McDonald's. I might pull through, you know, you name the fast food and eat something really crappy and basically have dinner number one before I'd go home and make dinner number two and then have dinner number two with my husband. That was at least 600 calories a day that I didn't need to eat, right? So maybe by planning my meals better, by having more balance with um, protein and a little bit more of healthy fats so that um, I'm full and satisfied longer and then I don't have the blood sugar dips. Or maybe if I plan to have a little snack before I leave work, right? Maybe having a handful of almonds or eating a cup full of um, like Greek yogurt, whatever it is that you like to have, right? Having um, a bunch of carrot sticks with, with some peanut butter. These are all things that, you know, um, maybe I do now, maybe not. Um, I guess it depends on the day, right? Um, but these are some things that you plan in your meals um, and realizing, gee, uh, I've got nothing but carbohydrates here, you know, maybe I should pack a little something extra or just having snacks at your, at your desk so that, um, when you do have those, those, um, kind of lulls in your work or, um, you're feeling hungry, you, you didn't pack quite enough, um, then you have options and you don't have to go to the vending machine. You don't have to pull through the, the Taco Bells or, you know, um, uh, buy a candy bar at, at the gas station because because you filled up things along those lines. So these are things things that you can control. You know what else you can control? You can control whether you do self care for yourself, right? Um, what can you do to treat yourself? You know, I had a really interesting conversation with my friend uh, Maria. She's she's a coworker of mine, and I had said something about how hey, I hit 203 pounds and I want to find a way to sort of treat myself, right? And I said, well, maybe I will go and have frozen yogurt this weekend with, with my husband. And what my friend Maria said to me is, Rachel, maybe you could have a non-food way to treat yourself. And honestly, whoosh, my mind was blown because... Um, and I said, well, but Maria, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm not going to, you know, get the big cup. I'm going to get the little cup. I'm not going to load it down with all the candy. I just physically want the frozen yogurt because frozen yogurt makes me happy. It is where I met my husband. That was our first date was meeting at a frozen yogurt place. And so I have very positive associations with frozen yogurt. I want to say maybe three or perhaps four times a year max, we go and have frozen yogurt together. Like we do it for our anniversary, things along those lines, right? Um, but yeah, she's right. I don't have to treat myself with food. I can do something else. Like, you know, it's been a while since I've had my hair cut. Looking a little shabby, kind of like a lot of us are, you know, with COVID and everything. I had decided I wasn't going to dye my hair anymore. So you can start seeing a little bit of the gray kind of popping through. That's, that's okay. I'm 52, right? It's okay for me to have a little bit of gray. Um, and, and with redheads, it tends to look kind of a little bit more blonde, kind of strawberry blonde anyway. Um, but, you know, maybe it's time for me to go and get a haircut. Maybe um, I can get like a facial or, or get a massage or, or get a pedicure done, right? These are things that I can do to treat myself and to do self-care that doesn't involve food, okay? Um, so self-care, definitely something that you can control. Um, another thing that you can control, exercise, okay? Um, yeah, so I've made the conscious choice to set my alarm, to go to bed earlier, to set my alarm early and to get up in the morning and to exercise. 
you got to make the time for it. It's not going to make the time for you, right? Most of us, myself included, I work full time. In fact, not only do I have a full time job, but I have a part time job too that um, that I do, right? I and I'm married, and um, I you know I live a busy life, right? I do all the grocery shopping for our our family, things along those lines, right? I run all the errands for our family, and um, so time is precious. You have to make the time, you have to schedule it, and you have to stick with it. Sure, at first it's gonna, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck, it's not gonna be fun. Um, you're gonna be dragging ass, <laughs> you know? like you're gonna be hating life, like, ah, hit the snooze, hit the snooze, hit the snooze. Guess what, I'm, I hit the snooze once now. You know, I'm, I'm it's hard for me to get up in the morning and, and kind of get my, my, my rear end moving. Um, but I used to hit the snooze like five, six, ten times, um, and then I would get up. In fact, I would I would set my alarm to be able to hit the snooze like nine million times. Um, but I really don't need I don't need to do that anymore because um, it's amazing when you exercise, you sleep better. When you sleep better, you can get up better in the morning. I wake up and I, and I'm amazed at how much energy I have and. When I have a day off from exercise, I miss the exercise, right? I'm missing it because uh, my body wants to be in motion. My body wants to do stuff. Well, along those lines, like just being more active, you know, just getting up, walking. You can do things like you can get like a little sports watch and, and, and they have like little features where if you haven't moved in a while, where it will buzz at you and say, hey, get your butt up and move, right? Um, especially if you have a day job. Now, I, I walk from patient's room to patient's room. I'm on my feet. I'm picking up babies. I'm, you know, I'm doing stuff all day long. I work in a hospital with moms and babies, right? So my job, I mean, it's not the world's most active job, but I'm up and I'm moving um, unless I'm physically um, documenting, you know, charting what I have done. Um, but a lot of people have, day, have uh, you know, jobs where they're, they're sitting, right? Get up stretch your muscles, wiggle a little bit in your chair, right? Have maybe some music in a little bit of music in, in the background noise, um, where you can kind of, you can just kind of move a little bit while you type, right? That's kind of fun. Um, anything along those lines, right? Um, maybe when you eat lunch, you know, at work, um, just like that, instead of that five minutes of screwing around on your telephone, walk, take a walk. Right, walk around the office building. If you work from home, walk around the house, go up and down the stairs, uh, anything along those lines. Get your body moving more. Think about being active. Think about moving more, right? And your body is gonna thank you. It all adds up. It definitely all adds up, okay? Um, and one last thing that you can control, and this is um, <laughs> something that I kind of alluded to before, you can control how stubborn you are, right? I made up the decision that I was tired of being fat. I don't want to be fat anymore, right? I don't want to have to go and shop in the fat lady's aisle, um, you know, the, little, the little aisle that they, they have in, in, in the department store where, you know, they, they, they allow me to have sizes that actually um, fit me, perhaps, you know, in, the, in, the, in the back you know, on the third floor or something like that. I don't want to have to go to Lane Bryant anymore. I don't want to have to go to Torrid. Um, the, if you don't know what those are, if you are in other parts of the world, um, these are basically um, clothing sizes for um, that all they sell is fat ladies clothes, right? I don't want to do that anymore. One of my goals is I want to be able to go into any store that I want. And I want to be able to be able to try on clothes and I want to be able to fit in in normal people size clothes. I don't want to have to pay extra money for fat people's clothes. I don't want to have to, you know, think like, oh, you know, this this makes me look really big. I don't, I don't, I don't want that anymore. I don't want that for myself. I don't want to have to think, oh, well, you know, I I better buy this kind of on the loose side because what if I gain weight? These are things I used to do. I'm stubborn. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. So some of the things that I'm doing, as soon as um, clothes become a little bit too big, or a lot too big, because you know I'm kind of cheap, so I'm 
uh, I'm wearing clothes until they're kind of hanging on me. But once I kind of can't get away with that anymore, those clothes <laughs> right over there, I'm not gonna show you, but uh, trust me, uh, I got a big old pile of clothes that need to go to Value Village, Goodwill, you know, whatever your, your favorite um, clothing charity place is. I have a big old pile of clothes that I will never, ever wear again. I'm not going to wear them. I'm not going to hang on to them. These are things I used to do. Well, you know, if I lost a little bit of weight, I didn't get rid of my big girl clothes, right? Bigger girl clothes, right? Because, well, you know, what if I regain weight? I, I, I want to have these clothes to be able to fit in. Hell no. Hell no. I'm going to be stubborn. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm doing this for me, right? And sometimes I get crap from people like, oh, can't believe you do that. Oh, you know, boy, Rachel, you know, why don't you come out and, you know, do X, Y, Z with us? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, um, that is when I'm going to be running. I'm planning to run a marathon that weekend or, you know, whatever it is that I'm going to do. Right. So sometimes um, I I need to do other things um, and, and, and change those habits and figure out ways that I can be with friends and that, you know, it doesn't revolve around being in, around food that doesn't revolve around um, just like sitting. You know, I, I, I want to do active things and I want to take care of myself and I want to move forward. And I have to be stubborn about that, right? You can be stubborn for yourself, okay? Same thing goes when I'm exercising. There, oh my God, it is not easy for me. And sometimes there are plenty of times where I'm like, Oh my God, this sucks. This sucks. I'm drenched in sweat. My face is purple. I feel like crap. Um, I'm not into it today. Well, you know what? Suck it up, buttercup. Be stubborn. Dig in. Do it. Prove the haters wrong, right? Transform yourself. Be who you want to be. It doesn't matter if it if it's hard. In fact, if it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, everybody would be an Olympic athlete. If it was easy, no one would ever be fat, okay? Um, of course, nobody gets to have been 260 pounds. And, and in all honesty, and if you know my backstory, okay? I was 285 at, at my all time heaviest, okay? So it was 285 and I lost 100 pounds. Now, I had a series of life circumstances, um, a divorce, being separated from my children, only having partial custody of my children, um, technically shared custody, right? But I wasn't with my children all the time. Um, I, ha just, I, I had some uh, health crises, etc. you know? And unfortunately, I let that get back up here and I regained weight slowly it crept up on me and all of a sudden I, I was 260 I was really close to being back to my all-time high weight and I I'd started to resign myself to being a fat person again and you know I just no 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 it's not gonna happen again I'm gonna be stubborn I'm a stubborn cuss right okay well, you know, maybe you found some value here. Maybe there are some things that you were able to say, you know what, maybe that's something I can apply to my life. Maybe that's a way that I can look at things and think about things. Maybe this is how I can change my life because you know what, me, I am nobody special. I am nobody special. It's not easy. It is nothing but hard work, hard work, making the conscious choices to eat better, to take care of myself in every way, mentally, physically, nutritionally, in fluid intake, and also just in changing my literal mindset, changing how I see everything down to an, a, a, a granular and spiritual level, okay? I am gonna be stubborn and I'm gonna make these changes and just watch me burn that butter, okay? Watch me burn that butter, right? Who knows, you know, I'm gonna be pretty hot when all, <laughs> when all things are not gonna be an underwear model. I'm probably also 
not gonna be a fitness model. I'm just too old. Um, but that's okay, right? I'm gonna be the best Rachel that I can be. I'm gonna have the best body that I personally can have with the, the, the genetics and, and, and the age that I am and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm gonna be the best that I can be. I want you to be the best that you can be, all right? I love you all, I really do. I love everybody. Um, but you know what? It's time for me to love myself too, right? Because I deserve it, right? I deserve to be happy and I deserve to be healthy. You deserve to be happy and healthy too. Be well, much love. I love you all. Burn that butter, all right? Thanks so much.